Hello, everyone, and welcome to our November 2022 Virtual Vendor Summit. Um, I know we're meeting virtual again this time. I am hopeful that our next meeting will, will be in person. I know several of us, including myself, were fortunate enough to be at Vienna um, for an in-person developer summit back in early September, and that went really well. So I'm looking forward to doing more of these things in person and getting to see folks face to face. But for today, uh, we're online on Zoom, as you can see. Uh, and let's see what else I want to go over. Um, so uh, this vendor summit is pretty similar to the developer summit we, went, we ran last June um, with a similar schedule. So we'll have kind of about 30 minute breaks between talks. And during those breaks, you can head over to the hallway track, which is on spatial chat. We've dropped a link to the spatial chat room. It was in the email you received if you're attending. Um, we've also posted it in IRC and the Dev Summit channel on FNet. Um, speaking of IRC, if you want to um, kind of, aside from talking in the hallway track, if you want to kind of chat with folks during the conference, you can meet on IRC in the Dev Summit channel on FNet Network. Um, there's also a Dev Summit on uh, FreeBSD Slack instance that you can also talk to folks in. Those are also places that you can ask questions of speakers. We do ask that if you ask a question of a speaker on IRC or Slack, that you please put a capital Q colon prefix in front of it so that we can recognize it and help relay them to the speakers. If you're attending the summit on Zoom, you can also use the Q Zoom's Q&A feature from, for a Zoom webinar to ask questions of speakers during their talks. Um, just as our last past several virtual summits that we've had, um, the foundation has sponsored this. They cover the cost of doing the webinar. Um, and also, uh, several folks from the foundation help with actual managing the organization, inviting folks. Uh, and especially, uh, uh, so I want to thank all the folks from that team who've helped organize this, including um, Anne and Deb, Lauren and Drew, and Ed Mast and Joseph, uh, for recruiting speakers and kind of organizing the schedule and making all of this work behind the scenes, doing um, Test with speakers to make sure, like run throughs to make sure everything works fine, works fine, and organizing all the logistics. And they'll keep doing that too when we're in person. So, uh, big thanks to that team. Our first talk for today is going to be from the FreeBSD Foundation, and it's going to start with Deb, and then she's going to, I think, hand it off to several other people. So, I'll hand it off to Deb so she can start her talk. Oh, there we go. Anita, thanks, John. Um, so I'm Deb Goodkin. I'm the executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation, and I just want to say hi to everyone. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining. I know for folks like me, this hour is totally perfect, but I know there's a lot of people out there who are actually watching us uh, in the early morning or late night hours. So we really appreciate you joining us. Um, I do also want to just welcome you to the third annual virtual summit. And like John mentioned, I mean, it is a little sad that we've, this is the third time we've had to do this virtually, uh, the vendor summit that is. And, but um, I think it definitely looks promising for next year and looking like we might have three developer and one vendor in-person summits over the year. So let's just keep our fingers crossed that that will happen. So. Right now, I'm going to share with you uh, who we are, who's the foundation, what we're doing, and then some of the plans for 2023. And um, like John mentioned, I'll hand it off to a few different team members who will talk about their specific areas and go into more detail and include also some of our plans for next year. So let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. And um, so I just have to find that button. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you see my slide presentation here. So who are we? Uh, we were founded back in March 2000 to support the FreeBSD project. So we've been around for 22 years now. Um, we are 501c3, which is a US tax classification or IRS classification. And it means that we're a public charity, that we're here for the public good. Uh, we're based here in Boulder, Colorado, and that's where I'm coming from. But we are we actually have team and board members from around the world. And we're 100% funded by donations. So what is our purpose? We are here to serve you, the community, and the project. 
And so, I mean, the community is made up of folks doing so many different ways to contribute to FreeBSD from writing code to uh, testing the code, to writing blog posts, to doing videos. Uh, there's so many different ways that folks here and around the world are contributing to FreeBSD. And we wouldn't be here without you. Uh, our purpose is to um, step in and fill critical needs of the FreeBSD project. And we believe in the idea of people working together to create something bigger than themselves. So we are governed by a board of directors and they are located uh, in various areas around the world. Uh, this way you can have, um, you can see faces, names and their responsibilities are to uh, provide fiduciary uh, governance or responsibility for the foundation. And they also help us with the longer term um, vision and uh, strategic plans. Um, I post our org chart so you just see our team members um, and the areas that they work in. And um, our team is comprised of full and part-time uh, people. And But we also have a, a lot of contractors, some I've included here, as well as just others that I haven't included in the org chart. Uh, you'll probably notice that we do have an open position for software engineer, but it's um, we have not uh, published that yet. So you'll see that in a few weeks. And then in 2023, if we get the funding, then we should have probably two to four openings. So just stay tuned to our, um, our jobs page on our website. So these are the five main areas that we support. And um, so Ed and Joe will go over the software development work that we've been supporting and some of the uh, future plans. Um, and Dixon will go over our advocacy, well, free BSD advocacy um, efforts. And so those two areas are where most of our funding go. So more than half our budget goes to software development. Um, we also have folks who are on uh, various functional teams, including security, um, infrastructure, we have continuous integration and other teams like that. And we do support the project with any type of legal support that they may need. So that includes um, if they have a question like on uh, patents or um, you know export laws, things like that. We also own the FreeBSD IP, which includes the trademarks. And then uh, we support virtual and in-person meetings and summits like this. And it's a way for uh, folks to get together and share ideas and um, get inspiration. And uh, whenever we have these types of events, we always leave more uh, you know, energized, especially when we have in-person. So hopefully we will be able to go back to that soon. So uh, various ways that we can help you. Uh, we can find a project that benefits free BSD and Joe will go into more detail about that. Uh, we do provide travel grants. And so we have an application on our website. So if you go to free BSD related event that uh, there's a opportunity to get help there. Uh, we do purchase hardware and software for the free BSD infrastructure. Uh, we'll promote the work that you're you're doing because we believe that's really important for um, for the world to know. And we're also working with uh, programs like the Risk Five Mentorship Program, which is new, outreachy, and then also you know, just different university programs where we'll provide stipends. And that's an area that we really want to grow. So some of our 2023 plans are um, creating more. Um, that, like especially like professionally developed educational content to help bring on new folks to the project as well as help companies when they do hire folks to give them material to learn more about FreeBSD uh, to make it easier to adopt the use of FreeBSD for uh, individuals and for companies. And um, Ed will go more into this that we have a technology roadmap that we created a few years ago and it's always being revised and we look at uh, more, uh, you know, in the next year or two on implementing that. And so we get input from, um, you know, companies and just watch uh, market trends to help inform that. Um, improving the developer tools and to make it easier for developers and um, help them become more efficient. Uh, we are providing leadership training for the core team and uh, we're actually getting that ourselves too, to help us be more efficient. And then also improve the messaging that will help encourage um, other organizations and companies and individuals to use FreeBSD. 
Um, I always try to show uh, this chart every year to show our fundraising. Basically, it's our fundraising income versus what we spend. And as you'll see here, that we've only raised about 175,000 towards our goal of 1.4 million. And so um, it's the beginning of November, and we really need to get the word out that we need funding to help. Um, to fund our efforts. Otherwise, we won't be able to hire next year and, and do the work that we really want to do. So if you could go to your companies and um, help get them to um, consider sponsoring us, that would be greatly appreciated. So how can you support us? So your, your company could shine a light on the FreeBSD project and uh, public, publicly talk about it and promote how you use FreeBSD, that would be so helpful. Uh, write a testimonial for us too, that would um, also show companies how uh, companies have successfully been using FreeBSD. And then donate. And so I'm gonna take you really quick to our, um, this is our website. So if you go to freebsdfoundation.org, and then here on the top, uh, you'll see we have our donor list, but um, this is how you donate. and. Um, and it shows various ways what it doesn't include, but actually it may in the text somewhere, um, that most companies that donate, uh, give us larger donations, will either wire it to us or just do some type of electronic transfer. So that works uh, the best. And then we also have a partnership program for companies to get uh, more opportunities to have uh, community engagement and being able to promote the work that, you know, the work you're doing as well as uh, more about what your company is doing. And so you can go here to the partnership program and then you can read th through here on the different levels of um, partnerships. So we'll go back here and I will stop sharing my screen. I will be in the hallway track. So if you have any questions or you just want to chat, uh, feel free to, um, to find me there in that hall and I'll be happy to talk to you. So I'm going to go ahead and hand this off to Anne who will talk about our advocacy work. Thank you. All right, my turn to share my screen. Okie doke. Let's see, we don't need sound for this one. All right. Hi everyone. Uh, Nice to be chatting with you at one of these events. Usually I'm behind the scenes, but uh, today I get to talk to folks. That's exciting. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about advocacy and education. Uh, Deb covered some of the stuff uh, that we do to advocate for FreeBSD, uh, but some of the other things that we do are um, creating programs and materials to help folks getting started with FreeBSD. We have how-to guides. We did the FreeBSD Friday series. Um, we do various other sort of flyers and things to help folks really figure out how to get started with FreeBSD. Uh, we do promote the work that we and others do to improve the state of the operating system. Uh, we do that so that folks know FreeBSD is moving forward. Uh, we want to make sure people understand the work that we're doing. And, and also when there's other big things happening, we want to get that word out. Uh, she already talked about speaking at conferences and organizing events like this one. Uh, we do develop partnerships with other like-minded organizations so that we can make sure FreeBSD gets a broader audience that way. Um, we create programs and materials to help you spread the word. We have stickers and flyers and things like that that you can download off our website. Um, and of course, we do outreach to media, podcasts. Um, we go to student groups and meetups. And of course, the journal. Let's not forget about the FreeBSD journal. It's free. Uh, and the latest issue just came out yesterday. It's on security. Uh, it's a great way to see what's going on with FreeBSD and to spread the word about the project. So what is upcoming? Uh, we have... Four events on our calendar so far for 2023. Uh, FOSDEM's happening again in person, yay, in uh, Brussels. Uh, we hope to have a stand there. Scale's back at March um, in Pasadena. Scale's a great venue for us. We do an intro to a FreeBSD workshop there. We also like to have a talk. We usually have a booth. It's a great way to introduce people or sometimes remind them about FreeBSD. Uh, AsiaBSDCon is back in person in Tokyo in March, and they just announced the dates for BSD Canada 2023. Uh, May 17th and 20th. So we'll be hopefully have a Dev Summit there and we'll get to see you all in person again. So what else are we doing going forward? Um, we are focusing on more articles about how the project works. And we also promote the work that we're doing. We want to make sure that people understand, you know, the latest one we did was an interview with the SEC team to see why they do what they do and how they do it. And that's important to make sure people understand how the project works, how it's different from Linux. 
Um, and so we're focusing on that. Deb already talked about the training courses and the community members. Um, we're continuing more introductory workshops at scale and other places like that. We really wanna focus on success stories this year um, and growing our social media presence that way. So that means we really want to come up with ways for you to tell your story. Storytelling is incredibly important so that people can relate to why using previous is a good thing. And I'm not talking about like novels and fables and fiction, but it's really talking about how FreeBSD has impacted you and, and your company. And so we do that through case studies, through community member spotlights. Um, so if you have a story to tell, or you think you might have a story to tell, please reach out to us because we can help you craft that story uh, and make sure people understand why FreeBSD isn't so important and what it's done for your organization and for you. And then of course we go through, you know, getting a new PR firm and getting more media attention that way, podcast interviews, that kind of thing. And finally, uh, the most, I think one of the most important things next year is it's the 30th anniversary of FreeBSD. So we'll be showcasing the impact that it's had on open source over the last 30 years and not just open source, but computing in general uh, through various um, special events and, and special uh, fireside chats and things like that. So stay tuned for the activities that are happening uh, to celebrate FreeBSD's big 3.0. So that is all I have uh, to talk about advocacy and education. You can always reach out to me at uh, marketing at FreeBSD Foundation or and with an E at uh, FreeBSD Foundation. If you have ideas that you'd like to share, I am always open. Uh, we have a lot of help in the community. And uh, I do want to do one quick shout out to those folks. Uh, thank you for those who are already helping um, spread the word. So thank you very much. And I will now hand it over to Joe. All right, okay, so let me share my screen. And hopefully you see my screen now and you can hear me well. Okay, so my plan is to tell you a little bit about the uh, external contracts that the foundation is funding. Uh, we currently have uh, seven different projects. So Kirk McCusick, the original author of UFS, is working on a snapshot project. Uh, the foundation recognizes that these tools used to manage and configure virtual or non-virtual resources are important. Uh, so we are funding uh, Mina Galich to work on Cloud Init. We're also funding Zesper Chain to work on OpenStack. Uh, we've had uh, a long-term project with Wart Systems, uh, a number of contracts since the end of 2020 to improve LLDB. Bjorn Zeeb is working on improving wireless support on FreeBSD. John Baldwin is working on Beehive. And uh, Mitchell Horn has just recently started a, started a contract to improve uh, RISC-V. So a little bit of background about the uh, UFS uh, snapshot project that Kirk's working on. So. Uh, snapshots are available for UFS and they're available uh, with UFS with soft updates because the ability to take snapshots was added after uh, the work for soft updates. However, around 2010, when um, journal soft updates were added to UFS, that work wasn't integrated with the ability to take snapshots. And so that's exactly what this project is. It's uh, adding the ability to take snapshots for UFS with journal soft updates. And the, the main motivation for doing this is to um, avoid downtime. So when you have a snapshots with UFS, you can get reliable dumps on live file systems. Uh, you can also do background file system checks. So you don't have to bring the system down and, and you avoid downtime. So the project is broken up into two milestones. The first milestone is actually adding uh, the snapshot support for UFS with journal soft updates. Uh, Kurt's written lots of code already and uh, lots of that code has been reviewed. Uh, I list a few of the, the reviews here for those that are interested, a couple of the key reviews. Um, and Kurt tells us that uh, this milestone is very near completion. Uh, the second milestone, which will start after the first milestone is finished is uh, extending the file system checks. And Kirk says, working part time, he expects this uh, the the second milestone in the whole project to be done in about six months, so uh, approximately the middle of 2023. 
Uh, so cloud init is, is a standard tool for provisioning servers in the cloud. Uh, however, support is, is not as good when you get outside of, of uh, Linux. And so uh, we recognize that that's, that's uh, a reason that cloud providers could cite for not uh, supporting FreeBSD as, as, as tier one or not for board, uh, supporting FreeBSD at all. And so we want to change that. And the goal of this project is to enhance uh, support for cloud init on FreeBSD to the same level as it is on, on Linux. And so at the foundation, we've learned that um, it's often uh, beneficial for both the contractor, the foundation users to divide these projects up into more uh, to smaller, more manageable uh, milestones. And that's exactly what we've done here. Uh, uh, we've got six different milestones. So Mina is working to implement an if config parser. And so there was some discussion about this milestone during the proposal stage. It might be beneficial to, uh, to do this with libif config. So we might reevaluate that in the future, but this is the direction that we're going right now. Uh, Mina is also planning to implement a network class extraction, IPv6 configuration, login.conf parser, uh, DevD rules for Azure. And Mina is also going to uh, add some documentation to the, to the handbook for uh, her work productionizing FreeBSD. Uh, next project is, is OpenStack. So OpenStack is a system for supporting all different types of computing resources from virtual machines to uh, bare metal uh, hardware. But OpenStack is currently only unofficially supported on, uh, uh, unofficially supports FreeBSD as a guest. And that's the, the goal of this project, to, or the goal of this project is to support FreeBSD as an OpenStack host. And so uh, what Zestful plans to do to verify this work is set up uh, three different OpenStack clusters. Uh, the first cluster will be uh, at the University of Cambridge for the Cherry team. So uh, the team there works with these Cherry Morello, Morello boards that they often have to share with colleagues all over the world. And so having OpenStack could streamline that process of sharing those resources. Uh, the other two clusters, OpenStack clusters, are, are planned for the, the main freebsd.org cluster. The first is for resource management in the NetPerf cluster. And uh, Zesper also plans a mini cloud to be used for reference machines uh, uh, for, for basically FreeBSD development. So the idea here is that uh, developers need to uh, develop or test code on different branches and architectures. And so with OpenStack, they'll be able to self-serve these systems and fire them up. Uh, and they'll also have complete control. So hopefully this will uh, both assist developers and relieve a bit of a, a burden on cluster admin. So as I mentioned, uh, Morat Systems has been working on a long-term project with the foundation. Uh, the ultimate goal is to improve LLDB, so the debugger associated with LLVM, and make it feature complete with GDB, the, the, the GNU debugger. And so one thing that Morat Systems has done a great job of is describing the work that they're doing. So if you want more detail, you can head over to their site, or you can also head to the foundation site where uh, that work has been uh, quite adequately or, or quite well summarized. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a flavor of the work that Morris has been doing, I can list off a few of the uh, develop, uh, deliverables. Uh, so before this work, the LLDB plugin model on FreeBC was obsolete and growing technical debt. So the old plugin model was replaced with a modern plugin using a client server layout. Uh, follow fork and follow vfork operations for implemented save core functionality, support for debugging by a serial port, improved GDB protocol compatibility, support for FreeBSD kernel core dumps inside uh, L L LLDB live kernel debugging on FreeBSD. And uh, the current contract involves improving support for multi process debugging. Um, and it's divided into three different milestones. The first two milestones, which have been completed, are to implement the nonstop variant of GDB remote serial protocol. The second milestone involves implementing full support for multi-process protocol extensions in the LLDB server. 
And the third milestone involves uh, multi-processing or multi-process debugging support in the LLDB client. So as I mentioned, uh, Bjorn Z has been con contracted to improve wireless support on FreeBSD. Uh, much of that work has uh, been focused on uh, the 802.11 Linux KPI compatibility code. So the idea here is you take a driver that was developed for Linux and you incorporate it into FreeBSD with uh, little or no modifications at all. And so that work has shown to be uh, quite fruitful. Uh, other work that Bjorn's uh, done is work directly on drivers. So the uh, Intel, the IWL Wi-Fi driver, and he's also done work on uh, uh, drivers for chipset from other manufacturers like Realtek and Athros. And so Bjorn's uh, next focus is on doing whatever it takes to improve uh, wireless speeds. Uh, so some other work, uh, John Baldwin has been contracted just to uh, uh, dedicate an hour or two each week to deal with any uh, beehive issues in particular security issues that come up. So um, just to give you an idea of a recent PR that, that John uh, tackled was listed here where uh, some potentially uninitialized values could be sent to memcopy. Uh, some other work, um, <clears throat> we funded a uh, mentorship uh, through Risk Five International where um, uh, a developer named Plumer uh, worked with Mark Johnson to get syscallers, so that's a, uh, a, a directed uh, kernel fuzzer to, to work on FreeBSD RISC-V, and that project was su successful. Uh, Plumer uh, uh, got it working and, and ran the fuzzer and, and actually has submitted a few uh, FreeBSD RISC-V specific bugs. Uh, we've also recently contracted Mitchell Horn to work on FreeBSD RISC-V. So Mitchell's plan is to add support for new hardware, improve support on different uh, platforms. He also plans um, uh, he also plans uh, general housekeeping, like de dealing with uh, bugs, reviewing code, that sort of thing. And he also plans to do a bit of uh, kernel documentation. So I also mentioned uh, Google Summer of Code. Obviously, this isn't something that the foundation directly funds, but we did. Uh, have some uh, contractors and employees uh, mentor uh, this summer. And we also administered the Google Summer of Code project for FreePSD. So if you want to read more about uh, the seven successful projects, you can go to the Google Summer of Code page. And uh, we're, we're hopeful that we're going to start a few new uh, projects. So Enwei Wu was a Google Summer of Code student that that Lee Wen mentored and he did some great work on, on wireless. So he plans to uh, work with Bjorn on, on other wireless improvements. Uh, we're still looking for someone to work on the handbook. So uh, if you're interested or know anyone, please get in touch with us. And I guess now is a good time to remind everyone that we're eager and, and open to uh, other project ideas or finding good projects that, that you think will, will help FreeBSD. So if you, if you have ideas or you're interested, please get in touch. You can read about the proposal uh, uh, process at that site or just uh, get in touch with me or, or any else, anyone else at the, at the foundation if you, if you have good ideas. So that is all from me. So I'll stop sharing. All right, thanks, Joe. Um, so I wanted to just talk uh, briefly about the technology roadmap. Um, as mentioned, I'm Ed Mast, the um, uh, Senior Director of Technology for the FreeBSD Foundation. And for the last couple of years, we've um, we've had a roadmap, a technology roadmap that we've shared in these, um, these forums. And we continue to... Um, uh, refine uh, the roadmap with feedback from FreeBSD users and companies using FreeBSD and uh, discussions at virtual summits, things like this, um, or uh, hopefully in-person summits again soon. Um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit briefly about it. Um, and it, it sort of overlaps with the project funding work that, um, that Joe has just talked about. Um, the the roadmap um, covers both projects that we fund um, through project grants and 
um, tasks that staff, uh, foundation staff take on directly. Um, so our roadmap is, um, is broadly speaking divided into four uh, theme areas right now, um, which are desktop and end user uh, focused, commodity servers, um, toolkit and appliances, and containers, containers containerization um, and virtualization. Um, so with respect to desktop and end user, um, Joe covered the work that we've um, funded under this um, this topic uh, in depth. Um, this this primarily Bjorn's work with uh, with 802.11 support, um, and that will continue uh, for the the immediate future. Um, we're also uh, looking at taking on um, work to help support package base and other packaging um, uh, other packaging work as necessary. Um, but we're still still sort of evaluating and, and figuring out what um, what we need to or what, what in what ways the foundation can best support that that effort. Um, commodity server primarily covers just ongoing support for tier one architectures. And so, um, you know, this has historically been x86 support. Um, and then for the last mm, year and a half or so and, um, and extending for some additional time, it's included the work to bring ARM64 to tier one status. Um, and so Andy Turner has spent quite a bit of um, time uh, as a foundation staffer um, to improve ARM64 uh, support. Uh, in the not too distant future, we won't have ARM64 as tier one as a separate item within that, um, within that focus area uh, because ARM64 is uh, is now just one of the, the tier one supported architectures. And so um, uh, x86 and ARM64 are both covered under, under tier one CPU support. Um, ARM64 as tier one extends a little bit uh, as a, a standalone item, just as there's um, additional sort of uh, follow-up items and, and minor improvements and things that are specifically ARM64 support, uh, ARM64 focused, uh, uh, ARM64 specific, as opposed to sort of just general improvements across um, architectures as a whole. Uh, toolkit and appliance, our effort to date has largely been focused on the debugger as, um, as Joe mentioned, and performance uh, and diagnostic tooling is, is where our focus um, will move next after, uh, after the debugger work is, um, uh, is wrapped up. And then finally, um, container, containerization and virtualization. Um, as mentioned, we've uh, we funded John to do a little bit of work on improving security and some bug fixes within Beehive. Um, and then moving forward, we, um, we intend to look both at more, um, more Beehive work and ways that we can contribute to the um, uh, containerization story on FreeBSD that Doug Rabson um, uh, and Samuel Karp have um, sort of pioneered there. Um, so I think that's sort of the highlights of um, of what we have in uh, looking forward in the in the technology roadmap. And as I mentioned, we're very interested in collecting feedback um, from folks at events like this um, uh, on what areas uh, you think are important and uh, for FreeBSD and for the foundation's investment uh, as we go forward. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Ed, and everyone else from the foundation um, who talked this time around. So that's the end of our first talk for today. Um, and now we're going to be headed off to our first break. Um, a little bit early, but that's okay. So we'll uh, just hang out over on the hallway track. I know I'll be over there for anybody who wants to go join us. Um, and we'll be back here in about uh, 40 minutes, I believe, with our next talk. <laughs>